This presentation will discuss the intervention of Elkonin boxes and word sorts. Sound boxes were created by D.B. Elkonin in 1973. He first used them with preschool children and they are a visual and kinesthetic aid to help teach phoneme segmentation. Word boxes were an extension of the sound boxes that Joseph created in 1998. They also look at phoneme segmentation um, and they provide explicit and systematic support in that area. So this is what they are. This is a very basic graphic of the Elkonin boxes. There is one box for each sound. There is not a box for each letter, but a box for each sound. So it's an intervention that is designed to strengthen phonics skills. It helps children segment words into sounds and targets one-to-one -one letter correspondence. So when you're looking at sound boxes, students would slide a token under the boxes as they articulate the sounds. And then if you're looking at word boxes, students would move um, like plastic letter tiles into the boxes while they're saying the sound. So it's often called a say it, move it intervention. When can you do this? You can do it three times a week for 10 to 15 minutes and then progress monitor two times a month. And then it's discontinued when the child scores at benchmark for three consecutive progress monitoring sessions. And it can be used from preschool through first grade. This intervention can be done with a whole class, with a small group or one-on-one. -on -one. It can also be done in either general education or special education setting. And it's recommended for children who do not be benchmark in letter sound fluency, phoneme segmentation fluency, and or nonsense fluency. And so you can see here in this picture that they're using tokens um, accompanied with a picture to slide the sounds into the boxes. So why should we use this intervention? It improves performance with letter sound correspondence. Um, and the National Reading Panel recommends this type of explicit instruction through the second grade in order to help develop early reading skills. This intervention is simple and effective and low cost. It is hands-on, so it's a visual. It provides that visual aspect and the kinesthetic aspect to help all different kinds of learners. This intervention um, helps to increase student word identification and spelling skills. Phoneme segmentation is um, a skill that is most predictive of early reading and spelling skills. And so this intervention, um, it directly teaches phoneme segmentation and has been found to be associated with improvement in student decoding performance as well. It's also engaging for students. The materials are appealing. Um, it gets them using their hands. Again, it's visual, auditory, and tactile. So it um, appeals to a lot of different learning styles. So here's how it's done. Um, here are the student materials that you might need and then teacher materials that you might need. So here's an example of just a very simple, low-tech option it's easy to draw these squares on a whiteboard. You can use anything like bingo markers or any little tokens that you have that students can slide into the boxes for each sound. Um, this is a little bit more structured. Um, this provides a picture option um, and there's just a different type of token that you might have. Uh, or you can print out a sheet like this if you're wanting students to work independently and do a group of words on their own. Um, you would print off something that looks like this where they would um, make the word and then write the word. And again, just to reiterate, the number of boxes equals the number of sounds, not the number of letters. So it is, if you had a word like fish, then you would have two letters in the last box indicating the SH sound. 
So here's the uh, procedure. It's pretty simple. When a teacher selects a word list for the child for the type of words, um, and they're generally like CVC words, um, and so maybe this student needs help with you know a particular vowel sound, and so you would create a list with words, all words that have like the short A sound or something like that. Um, then the teacher is going to pronounce the target word slowly. So you would say k at, and then you would have the child repeat. And then you would give them their um, practice sheet um, or draw the boxes out for them, whichever format you're using. And then they're going to move their counters to each box as they say the phoneme. So for each phoneme, k, they would move a token into the box, the first box for the k sound, and then ah, they would move their second token, and then t, they would move their third token. Um, and then they're going to say the word again while sliding their finger under the boxes, and then they're, uh, you're going to record their progress on the recording sheet and give feedback as needed, corrective feedback if they're um, saying an incorrect sound or if they're leaving out a sound, you would give that that feedback as necessary. So here's what a recording sheet might look like for the teachers. This video will show the intervention um, being used with a little boy and instead of tokens the teacher is using cars, matchbox cars. So it illustrates that you can use materials that are engaging for the child and would be reinforcing for the child. Um, anything you have that can slide into those boxes. So this is a good example of, of a um, materials that are engaging for the child and of interest to the child. Here is the fidelity checklist. Um, so up here, you're just gonna make sure that they have the materials that they need and that the teacher has her appropriate materials. And then um, some steps for the intervention to make sure that the teacher is following so that all aspects of the intervention are covered. So what does the research say? So I looked at a study that was done with a sample of preschoolers that were in a Head Start program. Um, and after using this intervention, there was improved baseline levels of performance on phoneme segmentation when it was accompanied with that guided practice and the modeling and the corrective feedback, sort of like we saw in the um, video. And then I looked at a study done with um, intellectually disabled students, um, and after using the intervention, there was an increased baseline condition for word reading and spelling. And then this intervention also helped them to maintain their performance in identifying and spelling CVC words after repeated exposure. Another study was looking at the effects of word boxes and they showed an improvement on reading and spelling words as well as a maintenance of those words for up to seven weeks. And then in general, children who received the word box instruction significantly outperformed those who received the more traditional phonics instruction. I read another really interesting article that looked at uh, technology considerations and with with the the age that we're living in and everything virtual and children are so technologically savvy. Um, I thought this was a an appropriate and um, interesting um, aspect of this intervention to look at. So it was a study that looked at whether the iPad supported word box intervention could improve decoding and promote task engagement when compared to just the standard. Um, word box materials. So um, you can see there were three elementary students that they looked at. They used an iPad app that, that's called Build a Word, Easy Spelling and Phonics. So um, two out of three students had a higher number of letter sounds correct per minute uh, when using the iPad. Two out of three students had increased performance on next day retention when using the iPad. And then all of the students had a higher percentage of time on task during their interventions when they were delivered on the iPad. Um, so this is definitely an area of research that is still emerging, um, but the results do indicate the need that there might be a need to differentiate the instruction. Um, and so some students are going to respond to um, the intervention better when it's, you know, on an iPad or something to help with their time on task. 
Um, we should be careful to consider, you know, which apps we're selecting. The the um, article mentioned that, um, you know, not all apps are created by teachers, by educators. And so we just need to be careful when considering which ones we're selecting to make sure that they are um, valid, that the, that the research behind them is valid and reliable. Um, and then it would also increase the efficacy when, you know, if you do decide to use the iPad or some, some type of technology or app to, to um, use this intervention, that you are also, that the teacher continues to monitor and provide encouragement while they're using. So it's not something, you know, it's not going to be as effective if you stick a kid in the corner with their iPad um, and never, you know, pay attention to what what they're doing or how they're using the intervention. So just because it's on an iPad doesn't mean that you don't have to monitor and provide that encouragement while they're using it. So here's just some things that I found on Pinterest, just various um, ways that you can, that the boxes might look in your classroom. So um, from very simple, we all have, you know, cubes in our room. You could easily make this mat on construction paper and laminate it for future use. Um, this is more, this is using a tens frame, um, which we use in math all the time. And so you can change it up and use it for this intervention. Um, you could also pair pictures and sometimes you'll see Elkonin boxes shaped like this. So um, this would be the, the shape of the, like if this were drop, um, you know, because the D is tall and the P is low. Um, so it helps students with letter formation as well. Um, and then again, using the pictures with the tokens, and then this is using like letter tiles. This looks like a memory game. You might use pictures from a memory game and then letter tiles, and then having them color coded for, um, vowels and consonants. And then there's my list of references.